some, polit uh, some politicians uh, uh, during, during the next days, but uh, this is the, the last lecture given by, by the Academy. So uh, I'm happy to, uh, to give the, the floor to David or the University of Public Yes, good morning,
that civil society can take over some functions for the state. It can act uh, as a school for democracy. It can foster virtues like tolerance and respect for each other. Yeah, <coughs> the democratic socialization in general. And taking the deliberative democracy theory into account, according to Jürgen Habermas, for example, uh, civil society leads to public sphere. And of course, you can articulate your social interests. So, however, to fulfill this function, civic engagement of civil society means requires individual groups' rights and also like freedom of speech, freedom of assembly. <coughs> So there are of course missions like this one. Civicus is um, almost 20 years old science network. Um, it develops uh, civil society index, and of course we know the definition. Or another one by John Keane, a famous professor um, in Sydney. He's he established also the Center for Democracy, studying democracy in London. So, but we are we have this all already. So, the civil society organizations, they are all not part of the government and their characters are characterized by the fact that they don't want to make money. And you know, all these organizations, charities, foundations, NGOs, associations, and so on. So, how does the German civil society look? So in the past there were interest groups, there were affiliated with parties, especially with the trade unions, the, they were affiliated with the Social Democratic Party. And in the past they were divided among social cultural and religious, the democratic social order and the Catholic one. And today there are two subsectors, you can divide them by the fact how they are financed. Most of them are primarily financed by the, the state, for example, social or the health sector, others like the cultures, uh, financed by the donation of the um, The civic engagement uh, is the dimension of volunteerism in political and social contests. And as a German citizen spends some leisure time to help people. It's quite high number. Uh, so I argue that Germany, Germany has a very vivid social society and a strong citizen participation culture. If, you, if we talk about participation, you can just look at the voter turnout in, German, in the federal elections. It's about 80%. It's relatively it's very high. And why is it? Why does Germany has this world society? As you know, Germany has a very difficult and special history. <coughs> Recent two German dictatorships, the Nazi regime and the GDR, they appear as the enemies of civil society actually, but in the long run, they <coughs> help to rebuild the civil society. So people are aware now. Uh, People are aware of injustice and they start to protest. And all the movements, and there were quite often, there were a lot of movements in Germany, and they paid off. I mean, you know, the environment movement uh, led to the foundation of the Green Party, for example. And the movement in 1968 was um, students protested for more democracy and how their parents deal with their fashion. The third point is yeah, it's the dimension of direct democracy on the local level and <coughs> in the federal states. For example, we have, we have 60 federal states, and if the state's parliament is passing a, a law, for example, in baden württemberg capital city of Stuttgart, so citizens have the ability to protest against it. They if they collect enough signatures, for example, and force a, refer a referendum. So these are the main groups. So yeah, we can check the main. This guy is how many civil society organizations that Germany has. So 
general, there are about 200,000 interest groups in Germany, about including 40,000 sports clubs. I think, yeah, we have more sports clubs than here. Yeah. The foundations, and I mean, they have only this only football sports club. So the dad there, Steve Storm, Sabine Rima, she worked for the Civic Cruz, remember the, 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 the definition I gave you? She collected all this and she was writing the country report for the Civic Cruz, the German country report. So this number of the interest groups registered in crime is not in this uh, for 2002, it's still about 2000. And all these interest groups, of course, the most influential one are the who represents the German industry. And how do they act? They act, of course, as consultants, in, because in some cases they, are their, they have their expertise and they contact the representatives of the ministers. And yes, and quite powerful is also also all associations who represent Mittelstand. I don't know if you know the, the term Mittelstand. It's used in German speaking countries. It records for small size, enterprise, privately owned. They are all export oriented and they are all global champions or if you call it <coughs> champions in niche markets. That means, uh, so for example, the film Globe, I mean Global Control. So it's not important. Uh, global Control, no, it's important, not the name of the film, but uh, they deliver the Go cameras for the Confer Confederations Cup right now. This is uh, one example. And maybe if they're successful, they will deliver it at the World Championship. So these Middleton films, they employ about 70% of the all, all German workforce and they contributed about 50% to, uh, to the gross domestic product. Yes, and those are the most important associations, actually there are sort of umbrella organizations. So since 1945, all associations try to avoid the proximity to the party. And all German associations belong either to the Federal Association, Federal Association of Germany, so German Industry, or the Confederation of German Employees. So the first one is actually, which is actually representing only the interests of the industry. The second one representing all branches. So in the first one, the most important is the association for the of the automotive industry. Yes, another one is the <coughs> is the Chamber of Commerce. I think you all heard of it. It's not the German Chamber, but they are the Chamber of Commerce. Chamber. They are also Chamber of Commerce in the, in the United States. And this is an organization for about eight chambers who represent companies within the German state. So we're talking about trade unions. There was one big umbrella trade union, confederation of German trade unions, DGB, and representing six million. Two of them, each of the industrial union of networks, is two million, and the United States service union is also two million. So about, I think, seventy-five percent. The top officials of the Confederation of German Trade Union uh, are members of the Social Democratic Party. So, but if you look at this figure, so there is a the GDB, the third one, lost a lot of members within 20 years. The last one, the, those are the churches. And the first two are the Social Democratic Party and the Christ, Christian Democratic Union. So this is a tremendous loss within 20 years. Uh, any explanation for this? 
There are a lot of explanations for it. What can you think of? Quite a bit. Yeah? Maybe it's uh, similar to voting, you know, like the people like uh, confidence to the political parties, so they don't want to be active. <coughs> yeah, they are, they participate in, actually they participate in other forms, okay. Yeah, but there is another explanation, the party changed um, its policy. And another left-right party emerged. Called the Linke. And especially during the time when Gerhard Schroeder was the Chancellor. <coughs> so, this is one explanation. So, the numbers of union members and party members are shrinking, but nevertheless, people participate in different ways.
and all those initiatives against uh, the airports, there are also initiatives against the ban or night flights in Shalom and Frankfurt. And people protest because the, the costs are exploding. And of course, for they claim that they will damage the environment. And did you see this figure? This is those are the initiatives <coughs> on the federal state level. This is the number of less than 160 between 2000 and 2009. So the industry is complaining because they say we can't build anything with this initiative. I mean, it takes forever to build something. So people are protesting against wind power stations, new electricity, electricity grids, or, in, or power plants, or projects to become expensive or damaging environment. This is only the federal state. If you talk about the local level, we are talking about thousands of initiatives. So I argue German civil society is capable, theoretically capable, uh, to protest against Merkel's Europe policy, but uh, as, long as, as long as the economy is flourishing, there is no need to protest. We have all created up from Professor Schmidt that mm -hmm. yeah, Germany is not really negative influenced by the crisis. The unemployment rate is about 5%, it's less than the UK's average. The budget, the budget is that balanced, it pays the lowest interest rates in the history. So there is no need to complain. Protest, but you can recognize some, I will not call it protest, but the growing discomfort about, so in three directions. Civil so society complain that we are helping too much, and the other one is that we are helping only the banks, and the third one is that we are helping about the democratic regime. First one is we are having too much. This is again the German fee of losing savings. Again, what Professor um, Schmidt already told you about. So there is a, this negative perception that the South is lazy and corrupt. And I mean, uh, all these reports, news reports about the states, uh, the Greek state, uh, which is paying people pensions who are already dead. I mean, this is, this is confirms that at least in the eyes of the Germans, that the South is lazy and corrupt and they don't want to work. So for the, and they say that they should be grateful that they get the money from Germany. I mean, why do you complain if you get money from Germany? So for the Germans, it's inevitable that they have, that the South countries have to reform. They get the German money, so they have to pay the price for it in terms of part of all. So from the from an academic point of view, this is yeah. I mean argue about it, but this is uh, I mean the most serious charge is the next one actually. We are have only the banks. Since the economic crisis, the states used actually all the money from the taxpayers to bail out banks. So this is again the German fear. <coughs> they want money from the ordinary, ordinary men and not from the shareholders or the creditors. But so uh, the assumption, there is this wrong assumption that we are helping the ordinary Greek family actually we are giving some money to the banks directly so the bank can repay their debts and actually they pay money to the German banks. So we had this week the financial ministers, they agreed on a plan uh, that would 
require shareholders and creditors uh, to take uh, significant losses if another big bank is collapsing. But, I mean, it took almost five years to get this done. We have the financial crisis since 2008, and I'm not sure if this is working. If it worked in Cyprus, but I mean, this was a small country. Uh, I don't know whether this would work if, if a big bank in London will collapse. I mean, we all witnessed what happened when the states decided we want we don't want to pay out even for us. I mean, it was. Yeah. So if it comes to a big bank, I mean, I'm not sure because the European leaders have shown so many times that they are willing to break rules and call it an exception. <coughs> so this is a very serious job. And because it's a fact. And the other one is yeah, helping about democratic legitimacy. Merkel was criticized, having criticized for a statement that what we're doing is actually about an alternative. We have to rescue Greece because there is no alternative. alternative. Euro, there is no alternative. I mean, this is problematic. We live in a democracy. There are always alternatives. So, so she was having criticized and Professor Schmidt also told you that the Bundestag, which the German parliament has to agree on everything, has to confirm. But in reality, Merkel comes back from a new summit and all the rescue all the rescue plans are, are already done. I mean the members of the parliament they don't have the time to read this complicated stuff. They, don't, they have two or three days. I mean they have to agree on everything. I mean otherwise they will that will be anti European. So actually, there is no opposition in the Bundestag, except the one part of the Linken Yeah, this is why the civil society is complaining how come that there is no alternative. And of course, where is the legitimacy? Because all the rescue plans, uh, which is the compact that the European stability mechanism is for some experts. I mean, it's a clear violation of the German constitution and the EU, especially the no bailout clause and the state financing of the European Central Bank via printing. I'm talking about the unlimited uh, bond purchase. And of course, they demand a referendum to get an act of new legitimacy. Uh, examples are how do they protest? I mean, 37,000 people were supporting the seed of the foundation with more democracy against the European stability mechanism and the fiscal compact. Uh, it is the biggest suit in the history. Uh, it turned out it was constitutional, but now there is a, another case. Uh, the Federal Constitution Court is. Uh, is dealing with the unlimited bond purchase of the ECB. And uh, 2000, uh, I mean, some months ago, the members of a new, uh, of a new movement, the European Blockbuster Movement, which was formed after the Occupy Wall Street movement, they have blocked access to the European Central Bank. And this is what it looks like. I mean, this is. It's not like the Occupy Wall Street movement where they criticize the financial crisis measures in general. This is, as you can see, the slogan fight capitalism and austerity. This is really aimed at the European leaders, European crisis management. And of course, the foundation of the new party alternative for Germany. So it looks like very confusing that we are talking about the parties and the parties don't belong to a civil society. But this is actually a direct result, result of Merkel's crisis management. And 
this party it was it was not a goal of the members to, to be a party actually if they were just a political group or just a conservative movement. Uh, there are four founders, uh, <coughs> three of them belong to the Christian Christian Democratic Union, all are conservative and somehow disappointed about the Bank of Zero policy. Because they want the real alternative, and th that's why they choose the name Alternative for Germany. Because like I said, there is no alternative. So they get a lot of support from economists and the academic world in general. And of course, they get a lot of support from the Christian Democratic members. So what are their goals? Uh, the party presents itself as a moderate academic. I mean, about 80% are male, <coughs> and I think more than half has a PhD. It's just, they call it the professor's party. And the program is focusing on the currency policy. Nevertheless, the program has, of course, some, some articles about democracy, pensions, and energy policy, but they are actually focusing on currency policy. So they said the, gar the guarantees Germany gave are, are already lost. <coughs> they went back to Maastricht. The Maastricht Treaty must be respected. That means uh, no guarantees for the debt of our countries. And countries should, it should be political and legally possible to leave the European monetary, monetary union. And establish, for example, Greece should establish a parallel currency and and declare just bankruptcy <laughs> because bankruptcy, to declare bankruptcy, is a normal thing that everyone grows up. Like Argentina did it, it's a normal thing. And the European Central Bank should start to intervene in the second market or the first market and buy bonds. And the private sector is actually should be responsible when banks when banks are collapsing. And any transfer of sovereignty should be legitimized by a referendum. So this is one of the founders, Ben Luther. Uh, he's a professor of microeconomics at the University of Hamburg. <coughs> he's well known as an economist and he started in Berkeley, worked, worked for the World Bank, and he previously belonged to the Christian Democratic Party for 30, 30, for 30 years. So, and since the oil crisis is a very important topic in Germany, there were quite a lot of there are still quite a lot of political talk shows and the media said, okay, let's well, invite this guy to look how he how he's like. And it turns out he's very eloquent, and very persuasive, knowledgeable, he knows all the arguments, knows all the figures, and he can really convince one that the euro is a failed currency. I mean the media I will not say they love him, but we had another uh, we had another example with a professor who wants to get uh, into politics. Um, <coughs> and it was a complete disaster. Um, okay, now let's. So this is the alternative for Germany. <coughs> Unlike other measures, the opposition party is really here against 
uh, they, they are for the group mode, so they don't want to follow macro. And there's another one. Association federal rules. So association for rules and create for the criticisms. They support the group mode, and also, of course, the um, trade unions. They're big umbrella trades in it. So what is the argument of the opponents? <coughs> they argue blue bones, um, they would relieve the debtors, the debtor countries of the pressure to introduce hard, tough, to force. So it's economically wrong and counterproductive. Again, here is the fear the professor was talking about, the fear of using their money to pay high interest rates and just to pay for the debts of other countries. And on the other side, um, what are the opponents saying? The opponents are saying, and <coughs> actually, if the science, the science, what do the scientists say? The supporters. I mean, euro bonds, it's about the stabilization of the euro prices. And euro bonds are economically a good tool to stabilize the euro zone because, according to the to the optimum currency area theory, Professor Zesnova told you about. I mean, for optimum currency area, you need a banking union, you need a fiscal union, and you need transfers, and of course you need euro bonds. This is what the supporters are saying. So it's about solving the crisis. It's a good tool to solve the crisis. On the other side, Scientists of the opponents say that actually it's a fight about, they argue about the, the roots of the fight. Those are arguing that this is a, it's a failure of institution, institutional design. The, old, the others are arguing it's a competitive, competitive problem. We can't close the competitive gap, gap with your bonds. We can't do this. And it's a wrong incentive for budget discipline in <coughs> crisis sticking states. And the most famous scientists who are presenting this idea is Hans Werner Sinn, president of the Ethel Institute for Economic Research in Munich. That he's also, yeah, he's quite famous as well. He's also, uh, he was invited for the, to speak. Uh, at the hearing um, when the Federal Constitution Court was, taught, was dealing with the unlimited bond purchase, and he was speaking there, he was, the, he was defending the side of the opponents. In order, he says that it's, the costs are too high, the unlimited bond purchase is actually unconstitutional. This is what he was saying. So theoretically, theoretically, Germany has built it to society and it's capable to protest against medical, medical crisis management, but as I already told you, there is no need. All the figures are showing that the economy is flourishing, but you can't predict whether this will be over soon or not. I mean, Due to, due to the unpredictable factors, again, the judgment of the federal constitutional court, nobody knows how the judges, what they will say about the unlimited bond purchase. So then the crisis can get worse. And what are the consequences? How do civil society react? I think, okay, rage is a hard word. I mean, they will somehow react. And Merkel must, yeah.
this is my conclusion.